Hi, welcome back to another episode of Minds Behind Maps. I'm Maxim Lutterman, and this is the latest episode in this experiment I'm trying, where I sit down with people who are creating and using anything geospatial to try to understand more about the field and the people in it. Today is a bit of a different episode, and one I've been wanting to do for quite a while. I was fortunate enough to sit down with Daniel O'Donoghue, who hosts and manages the Mapscaping podcast and website. Daniel has been a source of inspiration for this podcast. Listening to his work over the weeks has been part of what contributed to me believing podcasting in this field was possible. Behind the scene, he has also been a great supporter of my efforts to make this podcast a thing, for which I'm very grateful. Beginning a podcast isn't necessarily the simplest thing, especially when download numbers aren't that great. I try to tell myself that those don't matter, but it still inevitably gets onto you and crawls under your skin to poke your brain a bit. Having people like Daniel reach out and being supportive is helpful and motivating in many ways. Daniel recently talked with Joe Morrison on his podcast about personal branding, where he also talked a little bit more about his process as well. I thought this would be a great moment to reach out to Daniel to know if he'd be interested in diving a bit deeper into his approach and work in building mapscaping to what it is today with me on the podcast. So today's episode is going to be all about Daniel's journey to where he has created and keeps expanding what is to me one of the geospatial podcast references. I was probably more nervous than I ever have been for a recording, and yet this might be one of my favorite conversations I've had the chance of having so far. Daniel was kind enough to be open about the challenges he's faced and how those led him to where he is today. Especially towards the end of the episode, we talk a lot more about life and how it can be challenging, difficult, and how sometimes it may be possible to overcome some of those. This was a humbling conversation and reaffirmed my desire to have long, deep, thoughtful conversations with people in this industry. I believe this is a powerful way to understand people in their complexity, or at least this is how I want to try to do it. I learned a lot about Daniel in this episode and have gained another layer of respect for him and his craft. I hope you enjoy this episode and are able to find it somewhat useful as well. This is the type of conversation I would like to have more of, and as we talk about it in this episode, this is definitely not for everybody. But I believe that if I was learning for this kind of content, I'm probably not the only one, so I hope this reaches people with similar interests. We also talk about how podcasting makes it a little bit tricky to gather feedback from the audience. So if this in any way is something that you enjoy, or actually not, feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can find me at minds.behindsmaps at gmail.com to shoot an email. Or on Twitter, I've created a Twitter page for the podcast, so that's at Minds Behind Maps. But you can also just reach out directly to me, I'm at Max Lernmund. I'd be more than happy to know what you think about the podcast. Finally, I also just want to forward people towards Daniel's podcast. Um, I'd imagine that if anybody is listening to this, they already know what the Mapscaping podcast already is about, but hey, who knows? I also think it might be worthwhile to take a look at Daniel's website. He talks a little bit about it in this episode. I think he has some pretty cool stuff that might be worth a look there. Enough rambling, let's go to it. Here is my conversation with Daniel O'Donoghue. All right. Hey, Daniel. Um, welcome to Mind Behind Maps. It's, uh, it's great to have you. Um, usually I, I start by asking um, people the same question. I would like to ask if you could um, describe yourself uh, to me or, or how would you um, describe yourself? Well, firstly, thanks very much for the, for the invite. It's a real pleasure to be here. I've been listening to your work for some time now and it's really awesome. I'm actually a little bit nervous being on the other <laughs> side the of the microphone. Us. Um, okay, so if I, I had to describe myself, I don't know if I'd start with my work. I would think that I would say that I'm a 44-year-old man. I'm married, two children, come from New Zealand, live in Denmark. I'm a complete introvert. I enjoy stressful sports. Um, stressful sports to me are individual sports where uh, if I fail, it's completely my fault. If I win, it, it's me that's winning. Uh, I... I absolutely love rock climbing, long distance running. Um, I, at the moment, I'm really into jiu-jitsu. And uh, I, I also run a podcast. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know about that. Tell me about it. 
<laughs> so it's called uh, mapscaping, right? I think I heard yeah. about it somewhere. Yeah. So my intention wasn't to start a podcast. My intention was um, to get away from a job that I was really unhappy at. <laughs> okay. okay so, and, and, and there's a long story there. Yeah, but, we have um, a lot of time. Yeah. But I'm sure a lot of people listening to this will, will be able to relate that the feeling that you're, uh, that you're completely stuck. And, and that's the way I felt in my job. I was completely stuck. And, but I knew that I really enjoyed the industry. Like I, I love geospatial, right? Like a, it's amazing all the, all the different aspects, all the, all the different domains there are, the, the tech that's involved, the problems that you can solve. It's fascinating stuff, at least for me it is. But then finding yourself in a position where you really enjoy the industry, but you feel stuck in it. Like, how am I going to get out? I was doing a very repetitive job and I was really missing that, um, that sort of sense of, of meaningful work and, and purposeful work, if that makes sense. And so I started looking for other options. So um, yeah, I've been working with GIS for a long time. I can make maps and I was looking for a, 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 the kind of job, the kind of income that will give me a lot of freedom. So the original plan with mapscaping was to sell maps online, was to make maps based on elevation data, uh, simple maps, something that I could scale up, that I could use the same design. And, and I'm not a great designer. I'm, I'm not a gifted cartographer at all. So my thinking was that um, nature has done the work. I can take this data, process it, clean it up a little bit, add a bit of color and make very simplistic maps and, and sell those online. And um, yeah, so, so if you build it, they, they will not come. <laughs> That's one thing that I've learned. So I'm, I made a website, mapscaping.com, spent way too long making maps and uh, changing the design and realizing it wasn't fitting with the, the, my, the print files that I made weren't in the right format. They weren't in the right shape. There was, oh my God, I had way too much time on it. And then um, ran into the problem of traffic. Like, how do you get people to the website? Mm. So I become really interested in marketing. Okay. And during my like uh, discovery of marketing, what it means, how you do it, and how it's supposed to work, uh, I started listening to a lot of podcasts, and I became fascinated with the medium. So I was developing re relationships with these people that were teaching me something new at scale. And, you know, every week I was spending sometimes hours with these people. And I just thought this is absolutely amazing that, that, that this works, right? It's incredible. Um, and, and it occurred to me that there was no podcast out there that I really resonated with for, for geospatial, for all the amazing things that happen, that are happening in our industry. And so I thought, well, I could do that, you know, and at the same time I could, but, but here's the thing, like, and at the same time, a podcast will create a lot of content for my website because, you know, somehow you need to get traffic there, right? And a podcast might even be able to generate backlinks to my website. So I was still in that mode of, I'm going to be selling maps online when I started the podcast, mm -hmm. thinking that this was a way of reaching out to people, doing something I would be interested in, creating content that was of value to people. But at the same time, that thought that, this is going to generate traffic to my website. So that's how I started the podcast. So when was that, by the way? Well, I think I started uh, about two and a half years ago. So, so that's the podcast or the, or the website? Like how long was The, the, was the website is about five years old, I think. Okay, right. Yeah. So you, you started five years ago. And then that led, there's like still those two and a half years where yeah. you were building that. And then... To the moment where you said, "Okay, I'm I'm gonna start a podcast." Yeah, yeah. And so this this brings me to the reason why we're having this conversation right now is that um, well, I reached out to you. I've been wanting to have this conversation for 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 a while, but you recently had uh, Joe Morrison um, on your podcast, and you guys talked about personal branding, and I I really really appreciated that episode, um, and I, I found it really interesting because because you, you talked a little bit more as well than, than maybe you tend to. And one of the things particularly that I found interesting is that you mentioned that you did like 30 or 40 episodes before you published it live. So what was that process like? Because that's like, this is going to be the what fifth or sixth episode for me. And that's like being like six months right now. So I can't even imagine what 30 or 40 episodes must be like. So what was that process like to be, to go from 
oh, I have this idea that it would be nice to generate traffic on, on my uh, website. Uh, and, and like I could do uh, podcasting where that's probably something that just pops in your mind when you're going for a run or, or something, listening to something and, and you start, you know, like, yeah, maybe I could do that. And then like, there's this process from what I understood where you, you did multiple ones. And then one, what happened? Yeah. When you like mapscaping podcast episode one came out. So I did multiple podcasts. Yeah. 30 or 40. I can't remember. So for me, that was a learning process. I, I wanted to okay. just create a, create a channel. You know, what does an RSS feed like, look like? Where do I host the file? How do I edit it? So that it was just me talking and it was okay. almost like a, a, a diary for myself. And then I tried to explain complicated things like what, what would I want to talk about? Do I want to do a solo podcast? Would I like to talk to somebody mm. else? What subjects would I like to talk about? So I just tried to experiment with it. What, what does it feel like? You know, what distance do I talk from the microphone? All these kinds right. of things. And it sounds really, really silly. But remember, like I was trying to, trying to find some meaningful work trying to find yeah. a purpose, right? And then I didn't want to trade some non-meaningful work for some more non-meaningful work. So I thought right. if I'm going to do this, and from what I understood about podcasting, it, it can't just be a flash in the pan. The magic of podcasting happens when you consistently show up, when you make a promise and you keep it and you're there every week for them. And, and, and that's what I wanted to do. So it was just a big, it was a big test for me. Yep. You know, Am I still interested in this after 30 or 40 episodes? Right. And that's, that's what I was trying to do. But it was, it was, again, it was like doing it for the very first time when I contacted someone and, and did my first interview. I was absolutely terrified. So when did you know, like, um, you were ready to, to like, when, when did you answer that question? I mean, I, I, I bet I already know the answer, but when was that moment? What was that tipping point? of like you've done that multiple times and when was that moment where you you thought that there might be something here uh to, to be worth pursuing um like when i started recording with, with other people no i mean when 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 did you go from you're recording you're experimenting with yourself and you're recording multiple episodes that you keep for yourself and what was that tipping point to there's a episode one that's public or, or did you have like 10 episodes that you did before you went public with, with people? Like, I'm just trying to understand that, that initial first thing, which is, I think maybe the hardest part of, of like the, the first thing where you're still in that doubt about like, but what if people think this, or what if people think that, or what if I don't like this, even though I've done 30 episodes before, like, I'm, I'm just trying to understand specifically that point where you you put it out there and for the world to to listen to well i think that the maybe the wonderful thing about having a job that you feel stuck in is that you have certainty around being stuck i am certain mm. that this is not for me i'm absolutely certain that i don't want to be here anymore and what once you get clarity around that you know that it is not just this is not for you right so then then there's no other option so uh, I completely understand your question, but I hope you also understand that uh, I was almost being pushed, you know what I mean? Because okay. I had certainty around, I don't want to be here anymore. So any step that I took away from there right. was going to take me to maybe uh, the, the uncertainty of it, something might, this might work, right? Like right. It, it might work. I have to try something. And I'd been experimenting a lot with the website, you know, learning mm. a lot about um, social media marketing, uh, search engine optimization, what works, what doesn't work. And once I sort of figured out the technology around podcasting and had a, a bit of an understanding about how it worked, what I liked, and the whole time I was listening to other others, like, what are they doing? What is it about them that, mm. that keeps me coming back each week? You know, what, what, how do they build up a relationship with me? What, you know, calls to action do they have in their, in their episodes? How do they structure their, the conversation? So the whole time I'm listening to this and then sort of talking myself through the process. And then I think I, I simply got to the point where um, I ran out of excuses. It's like, okay, I have the microphone. I realize how it works. I understand the technology. I have a plan in my mind of, of what I want to do and how I want to get there. And then I had tried everything. You know what I mean? I tested everything. And sometimes you can keep sort of kidding yourself. Oh, I just need a new USB yeah. cable or just a, and I'd completely run out of excuses and it was time to go. 
Okay. And then how was that process? How was that first? Uh, how was the, the first few um, episodes? And, and how did, how did it feel to, to have those first few ones uh, come out? Well, I think everyone who's ever experienced imposter syndrome will be able to relate you realize that it's significantly harder than what you think to have a, a flowing conversation, right? Mm. You realize it's it's much harder sometimes to control the conversation as a host without being overbearing and trying to, because in my mind, at least for every episode, I have um, editorial intent. I, I want to go somewhere. Right. I want to talk about a specific product. I want to talk about a, a specific problem. I, I want it to start at a specific point and end at a specific point. But but I want the other person to take me there. Take, You know what I mean? I want to lead them. But at the same time, they are taking us on the journey. It's up to them to fill in the blanks, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. That's the game I'm but, trying to play right now. Yeah. So <laughs> it's almost like leaving breadcrumbs. Yeah. And how you get between each breadcrumb, that, that's completely up to the guest and being flexible enough to know, okay, well, actually, they're being really open, honest, vulnerable, mm -hmm. generous, interesting right now. Okay, let's go down that route too. And I, right. I'm not in any way, shape or form, like suggesting that I have mastered this at all. But I remember at the start thinking, it would be so much easier than than, than what it actually is. Right. So you mean you thought it was going to be a lot easier or it yeah. turned out to be yeah. a lot easier than you thought? No, I thought it was going to be much easier. Can you elaborate on that, on, on specifically having people open up on their, their conversation? Like what, what specifically did you feel was complicated? Um, I, I was really nervous about uh, my, my being nervous was getting in the way of me actively listening to what they were saying. You know, like, mm. because a conversation isn't just uh, a series of questions. A conversation is a series of questions that are linked to the answer or to the thing that they keep reinforcing the, the thing that we've been talking about, if that makes sense. So absolutely. But, yeah, but to get there, you need to actively listen. Well, what is this person saying? Oh, why? And, and that's, that was interesting there. And being able to put yourself or try at least to put yourself in, in the shoes of the person that you're making this for. So if you're doing it for you, great, that shouldn't be too difficult. But if you're doing this for someone else, like and, and, and getting back to that idea of editorial intent, well, what is your editorial intent here? And you're doing it if this for someone else, how are you going to get to that? You know, how are you going to reach that? How, how are you going to make sure that uh, Susan, who's listening to this on her way to work, is going to get the message? And, and I, that only comes about if you're actively listening to what's being said and then well what would susan say right now what would she want to know what would help her mm. get to where she's trying to go so could you walk me through what that editorial process is for mapscaping specifically um like what is it that you're you're trying to do when you have a, a an interview like a conversation with someone what how do you keep that in mind how do you um, put those crumbles as, as you were saying down to, to, to where you were going. And I'm guessing that has also evolved over, over the episodes. Like if you've been doing this every week for, uh, two years and a half, that's like 120 episodes, something like that. Um, yeah, yeah. so you, you're getting like pretty good at this or, or if anything, like a lot under your belt. So how, what is that editorial decision that First of all, you're, you're doing on the fly. That, that probably even starts way before the episode has started. But like, what, how, how does that go? How do, how do you navigate where you want the conversation to go? Specifically because this is also like a, a relatively technical field, this, this whole geospatial. So you, I'm guessing you have to make, well, I'm not guessing I, I, I do the same, but you have to make decisions on, on where you want to put the bar um, about what you want to explain, how deep you want to go. So could you walk me through what that process is like for, for uh, an episode of, of mapscaping? Well, yeah, uh, sure. Well, for me, it all starts with either a, an idea, a, a subject, a topic, something that's really interesting, something that I think will resonate with the people that are listening or a guest. And it sounds funny to say those two things independently of each other. Sometimes I find a subject like a super resolution, and then I go looking for a guest who would be a great person to walk us through that there. 
you know, explain what, what, mm. what is it? How does it work? Or sometimes I meet someone or have be or I'm introduced to someone and then um, then I go look at and if they if it turns out they'd be a great guest, like if they are a really good communicator, if they are a, a generous person, like and when I say generous, I mean generous enough to slow down and help other people understand what they know. <laughs> so if they're like that, then they could be a great guest. And then I go looking for a topic. So um, let's say I have a guest. I always start with a pre-interview. And for me, it's just a half hour to 45 minute chat so where I get to know them. And if, if there's no topic, I just ask them questions. I'm just curious and interested. And where are you going? What are you doing? What are you working on at the moment? Why is that important? How's that going to make a difference? Like, was that different at your last right. job? Like, who's the, who are the key players in that? And then by the end of that conversation, uh, if, they're, if, the, if I think they're going to be a, a great guest, um, I will have found a topic. And by the end of it, I'll have, I'll summarize and say, okay, so I really like what you said about, I thought that was really interesting about um, you know, measuring floods using SAR data. Oh, and, and you said that it started with tasking of the satellites. And then you explained that you had to guess where the satellites might need to be at a certain time in order to take those images because the the little satellites, they you know, the batteries aren't too big. They can't just be taking images the whole time and then start to build up a storyline from there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the basic interview for me, uh, completely independent of the, sh uh, of the topic, looks like this. I tell the guests that you get two minutes to introduce yourself and to convince the audience that you're somebody worth listening to for the next oh. 30 to 40 minutes of their lives. And, and I do that because, and not to be rude, but because I, I want them to take it seriously. I, we have a responsibility we are asking people for people's permission to make this for them. We're asking for 30, 40 minutes of their time. So we, we better show up and make a good job of it. And in, in, in my opinion, anyway, I don't think people want the entire background story. Some people get on and they just want to talk about themselves, maybe because they're nervous, maybe because they think that's the way it's supposed to be. But I want mm. to condense that down. I want the audience to say, okay, well, this this Max guy, I better listen up because he sounds like a genius, and then uh, and then jump into the conversation. So, well, what's the problem here? Okay, we're we're talking about super resolution. What is it? How does it work? How is it different from you know pan sharpening? And and then start breaking the topic down from there. But I've already done a lot of that groundwork in the pre-interview where I've made right. notes, and oftentimes I'll write a follow-up email to the person and say, hey, this is where I imagine it's going, but it's something like you know, okay, who are you? Where do you come from? How did you get here? What's the problem? How are we solving it? What are some of the challenges around it? What are the pros and cons of doing it this way? And then towards the end, it's, I want to leave the, the audience with an idea of, of where are we going? Okay, well, great. This is what it looks like today. Where are we going? How does this fit into the grand scheme of things? And the story, right. I try to keep the storyline the same for every single episode. Okay. And so that's on a, per episode basis if, if we really zoom out what what are you trying to do with with mapscaping like what is the thing that you think makes it that people come back and listen what what is it that you know overarching not not specifically on a per episode basis but like the the especially with when you have a catalog like like the one you have which is starting to to be pretty big what is it? Is, is there this like overarching thing that, that you're trying to do um, with, with the podcast itself um, on, on the content you, that, that you're trying to provide? You obviously have a, a bunch of, of people listening. You, you just posted um, today some of, of the metrics that you have. Like we're, we're talking thousands of people listening to, to, to each episode, uh, which, is, which is like pretty big deal. Um, so there's, there's, there's something that people get from that and that, that keep coming about what, what do you think that is? And, and what are you, um, yeah, how are you trying to, to do that? What, what's your like grand plan, basically? <laughs> My grand plan is to disseminate information. And, and that sounds like a, almost like a scientific thing, but try and find topics that are, that, uh, that, People perhaps don't know very much about it and make it understandable. Invite some experts on and have them break it down for us. Talk us through it. You know what I mean? If you're not a data scientist or you're not a machine learning expert, we use the term all the time, all the time. But 
you know, what about the rest of us that don't understand it? What, mm. what about us? And you could say, yeah, please just just go and read a read some scientific articles. It's, it's not real helpful, really. You know, so th that's what I'm, I'm trying to help people understand difficult topics. I'm trying to uh, help people understand where they can go to get help sometimes with, with right. their career. I'm trying to show people that, you know, people like us do things like this. We get stuck in our work. We we were a first, you know, first time employee. We struggled with imposter syndrome. This is the way you should be thinking about writing a CV or negotiating salary. You know what I mean? I'm trying to be helpful, I guess is what I'm saying. Or, hey, there's all this open source software out there that you probably don't have time to investigate, but maybe you should know a little bit about GeoServer. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it would be of interest. Maybe we could talk about cloud optimized geotips. Well, what does that actually mean? What services can we build around it? That, that That's where I'm going. And that that sounds like a, a fantastic um, kind of northern star to, to try to follow. The question I have is, why is podcasting good for that out of all the other mediums that we have, like blog posts, like YouTube channels, why would podcasting be a good medium for for conveying those um, information, like um, lowering the barrier to entry and making more accessible? Why is podcasting good good for that? Um, well, firstly, it's good for me. So yeah. I, I think we, we and understand me here that uh, it's good for me. Like it's, it's something that I, uh, it's a medium that I love and that's part of making that promise and keeping it and being honest about, well, what, what is it that I can promise? Because I can't right. promise to make a, a YouTube channel because I know <laughs> that I, I just don't enjoy it. I am a little bit, a lot dyslexic. So I can't promise to show up in a meaningful way with written content because I, I know okay. that I won't be able to keep that promise. So it's not necessarily that podcasting is a better medium than others. It's just a better medium for me. And also the, the odds are in your favor. You know, what is there? 50 million YouTube channels, a hundred billion active blogs kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, yeah, podcasting, there's, there's like eight. If you start filtering through the numbers, there's something like 800,000 active podcasts in the world that are registered in the, these big directories. That's not very many. And when mm -hmm. you say active, what they're actually saying is podcasts that have published one episode in the last three months. Yeah, that's like that's that's ridiculous. Like the and, and it's and it's the long form content. This is a real opportunity to have not just three seconds in someone's Twitter feed. It's a real opportunity yeah. to have you know 30, 40, in your case, longer with someone. Mm. That is amazing. I really like what you say about it's it's not what necessarily works best in general but what works best for you i think that's something that we don't hear a lot about as well it's it's about making something that you can make actually like and then maybe that's not the like absolute optimum solution to reach the most amount of people if you're building something but that's the one that you're going to be able to be building week after week after week and and i think that's a very healthy message uh to to also say that yeah we're we're not perfect we're better at some things than others we have more time more skills more this or that and like taking all of that into account this ends up being the thing that that works for you i think that's part of all these things that that you don't see when that message pops up that oh there's a new episode that came out um, and, and when you're on the other side of that, you don't see all those decisions that have been made, all those compromises, all those things that happen that, yeah, it's just a lot easier to put a microphone on and, and talk into it. So this is like, I, I, this is, for example, one of those things I, I didn't expect as an answer. And I'm really thankful that that's like where we're going with this, that to, to hear that as well, because um, I, I would have imagined that maybe you would have like tried a bunch of stuff and, and like, I don't know, even AB tested some stuff and like, okay, this is what works best. You never know, um, especially for things like that. Some people go really into it and and, and really try to, to optimize it. And some people are just wake up one day and like, hey, I could talk in a microphone. Um, so it's, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad that's exactly not the answer that I was, I was um, 
expecting. And and yeah, it turns out that um, if it's also a medium that that works for people, that's um, that's that's especially great. Um, have you found it particularly challenging for for a field like like geospatial, which is very technical, which you know is also very visible in a way, like it's maps, it's it's things that you see on a screen a lot of the time. Have you found that the fact that we're talking about this this field have have you found it complicated or or not necessarily you but the the people that you have on have you found it complicated to express an idea only through the the audio where we're we're so used to doing like powerpoint presentation where we have the support of of something behind how, how specifically for the field of of geospatial has it been for you uh, that is a really good question. I think what I'm trying to do is um, tackle overarching con concepts. So mm. I think like if you were trying to learn something, like, I think understanding it is one thing, but learning it for, for me is, is something different. Then I think it's time to head over to the YouTube with the, the show and tell. Right. Or the, the, the article, the written article with the step-by-step -step instructions. Um, so I think you've got to choose your message or you know what are you going to do and then find an appropriate medium for that if that makes sense like doing a qgis tutorial a very yeah. hands-on tutorial <laughs> via podcasting is not the great the best medium but discussing um open street map or talking about open street map as a community what what is it where is it going um who's pushing it right. in, in what direction i mean podcasting is a fantastic medium for that yeah I, I I couldn't agree more. I'm maybe a bit biased though. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's one thing I'm I'm also wanted to ask you because because you've got more under your belt than I do. Like, do you find it um, do you find it hard for people to open up and and to to play along in the field? Like, I think by now like people are familiar with um, YouTube channels and and blogs, but I feel like like podcast is still a little bit the the underdog. Where, where people might not be as, as familiar with that. Have you found it with, with some guests maybe a bit challenging to, to um, kind of have them play that game of, of the podcasting uh, conversation? Sometimes, I think because um, with, with YouTube, if you put a camera on someone, they're gonna take it seriously because oh, suddenly their face is on the box. Mm. And I think the challenge I've had around this is firstly, maybe not, people perhaps not understanding the medium and the power of it right and secondly that i the, this idea that you can just show up and do some talking and it's a podcast for, for me that that doesn't work i don't want mm -hmm. you to show up and do some talking i want to have a conversation and we i tell people we're not doing this for us we're doing it for the listeners we're making something okay. for them so we need to show up with intent and and take it seriously at, at least that we're I don't want to stress anyone out, but that, that's the kind of thing that I'm trying to get across to them. Like we, you know, I tell people, I share the numbers. I always refer to it as their podcast episode. And uh, you know what I mean? I want them to take ownership of it and show up in a way that's going to bring value to the people that, you know, that we're seeking to serve, that who we're making it for. Tell them that, you know, thousands of people are going to listen to this, not to freak them out, but just, you know, show up and be purposeful yeah. be meaningful G give me some good answers here help me out like and i do my best of course on my side at least i hope i do to try and lead the conversation i also tell them that hey this is on me the storyline is on me it's up to me to lead the conversation so you just need to relax and and do your best to answer the questions and if we have a you know if there's a cough a spill uh, you need to have a drink of water whatever i'll cut it out if you don't feel comfortable tell me we'll stop we'll start again mm -hmm but it's on me. And I guess what I'm getting at here is I'm trying to get people to take it seriously. Right. Because again, you know, 3000 people are going to listen the first week. I hope uh, that's a lot of time that you're asking for and you, you've made a promise. So I'm going to be here for you each week and I'm going to show up in this way. And people have expectations. At least I, I have expectations of the podcast that I listen to. Right. It's really important for me to keep that promise. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just like taking that in. One, one thing I, I find really interesting is, is uh, when you start referring to that, like if you think, I think you might have brought this up on one of your episodes. I don't remember where I heard this, but like 
even if it's like, um, first of all, 3000 people are not going to listen to this. It's, it's a lot less than that, but if it's, it's like in the hundreds and just that is like, if you imagine you go to a talk at a presentation and there's like a hundred people in the room, like you put your most serious face on and you like try to talk as, as seriously as you can. And now you imagine you do that for like 45 minutes, an hour, two hours. Yeah. There's just a hundred people that are, are going to, are going to be in the room, but you're still very serious. And I think we, we, we disassociate that. I mean, of course, it's so distant. You're not here when people are listening to that. But I think it 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 really is that thing where like there is that's that's like it's more than than you can fill a room of people that are going to be listening to that. So for sure, I think it 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 definitely brings that seriousness. Um, I do want to add a little bit of uh, something. I want to promote people trying stuff out to to try to do their thing specifically because I take the opposite stance than you. Um, I try to not take it too seriously. And I think that, I'm not saying that's the better approach or whatever. What I'm just trying to say is I think if anything, that brings a little bit of, of diversity to the, the landscape of what's out there. And I think it's really interesting, especially in this field that is becoming very complicated, very technical, it's becoming political, it's becoming a, an important one in, in, in what we're, we're bringing. And I think it's really interesting for me specifically, may, maybe not as much for, for everybody, but to hear that you have a very different process, you're trying to do something very different. And at the end of the day, we're both trying to do the same thing. We're both trying to have conversations with people who are in the geospatial industry and understanding what they're doing and how they're doing it. But it's very interesting to see that we're trying to take a different approach to it. Um, so yeah, I, I, I just think that's like really encouraging actually to, to whoever might be listening and wondering about that, like specifically because you don't want to do it the, the, the same way. Um, but I'm guessing that's from what you were saying, that's, that's what you got you started about. Like, no, nobody's really doing this um, in, in the field. And, and that's, that's what got you started. Um, yeah, it's... It, I would, uh, could I just add something to that? Yeah, yeah, please, that, of um, course. I, I, I'm all about diversity, absolutely. And I, I don't want anyone to listen to this and say, well, that's the only way of doing it. I think the magic about the internet, right, is that there's room for you too. And in the media as well, there's room for your voice. There, there really is. And when I talk about showing up and being professional and keeping a promise and all that kind of thing, it's not because I, I am, what do I want to say here? Uh, it's because that I, I believe that when you show when you put your name on the box, I, may, I want to be proud of the things that I, I make, I guess. I don't want to just show up and make a fuss and then be gone in two days or three days and yeah. not show up again. Right. I'm, I'm really trying to build something here. That's why it's mm -hmm. important for me. Um, and I get so inspired every time I look at um, Instagram. And the reason I get inspired is because there are accounts there with, hundreds, maybe millions of followers that post pictures of cats, right? Or pictures of wooden guitars or men's shoes or different colored socks. And I guess what I see every time, I try not to see billions of people wasting millions of hours of their lives. What I try and see is, wow, there is room. For, if you want to show up and be the expert in men's socks, please, there you go. I mean, there's, there's room for you. If you want to do socks, men's shoes slightly differently, there you go. There's proof that it works just over there on that Instagram account. Um, and you, you can find your people, you know, you're doing long form content. You're doing, in my opinion, really meaningful work. And, and I will continue to refer to it as work because I think it's important to put this in the world, what you're doing. And that's different, a little bit different to what I'm doing, but there's room for you. There's room for me. This is not a zero yeah. sum game. Absolutely. And I think that's really important for people to understand. Yeah, that's that's the exciting stuff about it. I think is is to uh, that's that's a, a great thing. I think I, I'm I'm gonna try to keep that in mind. Like spend more time looking at um, cats and men's shoes on on Instagram whenever I feel down uh, to remind myself that no, there's there's probably a niche out there uh, for it. <laughs> yeah, you have actually quite quite the following on on social media. Um, I was I was uh, digging a little bit. Um, through when I, as, as I do, when I, I try to do my research and it was kind of interesting to also compare that the, the content you put out on different platform is, is a little bit different on each. Um, 
And so this this comes back to the, the the personal branding conversation. Like, how are you trying to to do the marketing as well for for the podcast and yourself? Like, how are you trying to? You've made an episode. That's that's like a lot of the work. But I would argue that's maybe half the work. The, the other half is like getting people to to listen to it. How how do you? how do you do that is that something that that you actively spend a lot of time on like what's your approach as well to being to, to becoming the next uh instagram socks page um <laughs> that is a big ambition <laughs> it's a bold ambition the next instagram <laughs> socks page um my approach is um well i i have a website for a start um so that that's you know a source of traffic so i think about let me back up um yep. i'm trying to make something that's really good you know I'm, I'm really trying to lean in and make the best thing i can and i'm hoping that word of mouth will, will be the, my best marketing channel right because i do want people to listen when you make something like this and show up in a uh, in a predictable way each week you kind of hope that that it's growing that it's that it's building to something and i can see that's the case with with, with my podcast mm -hmm. um but but i'm also technical about it so, but it starts with making something great like it's difficult to polish a turd so try and make something really really great but then be thoughtful about how you promote it so i've curate, curated an audience on, on different social media platforms and i actively post there um i also think very carefully about the guests that I have on, like that they need to meet a certain uh, criteria. Okay. Um, and, and this sounds really awful <laughs> judging people, but they, they do like, I, I want good guests, right? I want yeah. people, um, not, not necessarily famous people, but I want people that are, are great communicators that have something to share that are, that are generous, um, that are going to help me promote it as well. I put a ton of work into this podcast and I ask, I actively ask people, can you help me share this, please? Right. Like, yeah. If I, yeah. No, I, I've, I've seen you do that. And I, I, I really find it in, like inspiring to, to, to see you like try to, to create that connection as well. And, and like, impl um, what is it? Implicate people as well in, in that process. Sorry. So, I, I just wanted to say yeah, that. Yeah, thanks. But, but yeah, that, that's part of my strategy. So um, you know, are you uh, here business X, if I do this, if we create this together, will you support it? Will you, uh, share it on your social media platforms? And there's something I ask before I interview them, I'll okay. ask and I'll follow up afterwards as well. Cause it's really important to me. It, it is. So that, that's a big part of the kind of things that I do. I'm also very interested in, uh, organic search. So I'm trying to rank for certain things. That's why okay. a, a lot of the topics are around very specific things. And, and my hope is that I can create a resource for people. If you want to know about um, QGIS or GeoServer or GDAL or something like that, I've got an episode on that. And then I'll try and rank for that. So I'll try and write an informative article about that on our website. Mm. I will try and write articles about that on other people's web. Like I'm not a writer, so I employ freelancers to okay. write articles about that on other people's websites a good informative articles nothing spammy that points back to our website uh if i feature a a company i'll ask them for a link um yeah and that's yeah so again nothing my, my intention isn't to spam the world with my podcast but i, I am also very conscious that there's no algorithm helping me out there's no yeah, algorithm helping me grow yeah like there is with uh with, with websites for example or particularly with youtube there's nothing podcast discovery is really really tricky and um yeah so, yeah, so I, I do a lot of that kind of stuff right one one of the topics that comes up a lot in well in in the conversations i have and, and I, i've heard it in yours as well is is how it's we're we're trying to involve people that are not inside geospatial directly but who might use it um we're, we're always talking about um people who are not geospatial first but who use a little bit of geospatial and then still are part of, of everything that is geospatial is that also something that that you're trying to to do to like reach out of the the like 
hardcore um, person who you know lives and breathes maps and and maybe as a GIS developer or something like, is that because what you're doing is basically trying to educate, trying to, to lower the barrier to entry? I'm, I'm guessing this would be a perfect introduction to, to the field as well. So it, it, is that something that you're trying to do to say, okay, let's let's try to get outside of that bubble and, and to reach those people? And, and if so, how, because you have the, um, you have the content that might be good for those people that, that might interest them, um, but they may, they might not know that it, it might interest. It, is that something that you're actually also trying to do to be like, hey, we're, we're doing these cool things about maps, you might be interested. Um, yeah, I, I could see where you're going with this. And I think it's a really interesting thought, but uh, for me personally, I would rather go an inch wide and a mile deep. And, and geospatial is so broad. Like people have actually, if you don't know anything about it, you say, wow, that's very, that, that's very niche, right? Is anybody interested in that? And if you know a little bit about it, you're like, Oh man, you could do a, an entire podcast forever about um, QGIS, right? Or about yeah. Python, about all the different libraries, and you you would never reach the end. And you'd have a dedicated audience. So for me, when I think about um, at the start of every, every podcast episode, I say, <clears throat> and this is a podcast for the geospatial community. So that that's very broad, and that gives me a lot of different interests that I can follow, and I assume that people identify with that. Uh, so I'm not trying to reach outside of the industry okay. as such. I'm trying to educate within, but within that very, very, very broad umbrella of geospatial. That could be mapping the sea floor. It could be talking about SAR. It could be talking about Python, uh, other tools. It could be talking about a career in GIS. What do you do mm. if you feel stuck? Uh, what did your first job look like? So it's incredibly broad, but trying to educate within that. But then, I, and within all that, the message I want to get across is that uh, you can make things better. It's up to you. You have right. options. You can change things. If you're not happy with your job, there is a whole bunch of options. Here, here, here they are. You know, I mean, you don't have to sit and make these maps and change these colors on the roads for the entire life. You could be an educator. You could be that um, that translator that sits between the very, very technical people and the people that don't know anything about geospatial. That could be a role. You could create content. You could. You know, that's my hope is anyway, you could try things that might not work, even within your job, keep experimenting, keep trying things, there's room for, for you. That's the kind of underlying message I want to get out to people. So one of the things I've been also quite curious about is, is what is the response that, that you've received? Is, is, have you received messages from, from people who said, Hey, I, I was listening to this for, for a while and yeah, realize I don't need to be doing this forever and, and inspired me to, to, to do something else. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's difficult with, with podcasting, right. To get that. That's why I'm constantly asking people, Hey, catch up with me on social media. You know, you can reach mm. I'll, I'll just respond. You thought, send me a thoughtful question. I'll send you a thoughtful response. Um, and I, I want that feedback, right? So I have an email list, which I don't use nearly enough, but when I do use it, I ask questions as well. You know, what, what, how can I make things better for you? What, what is, where are you going? How are you trying to get there? How can I help? Uh, and oftentimes, if there's episodes around careers, people will reach out and say, that really resonated with me. I am stuck. Or I have just moved from being a GIS map maker to a Python programming expert. Right. This is my story. And they'll share their story. I'm just getting out of the army and I'm trying to get into civ civilian life. I have all these GIS skills. Um, thanks very much for your episodes. You know, around personal branding, you get people reaching out going, oh, that's great. Thanks. I've often wondered about that kind of stuff. I feel like I couldn't have a personal brand, but yet I see other people out there with personal brands. So yeah, I, you, I do. And when I do, uh, if it's an email, it's often a long email. It's not just, right. hey, thanks for the podcast, mate. It's like, and this is my life story. This resonated with me because of this, 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 and that. So, yeah, <laughs> which, yeah, that, which that is must... really nice. Yeah, and, but I'm also assuming it doesn't resonate with a lot of people. Yeah. And and they just stop listening. So, yeah, but neither yeah. do socks on Instagram. I, I like, yeah. <laughs> I, no, but yeah. for real, it's, I, it's, I think... it's, not, it's not for everyone, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I think that comes back to like what, what you're trying to do. And, and specifically on the internet, when you're basically broadcasting to the entire world for anybody to listen, there's a lot of people who are not going to care. 
there's a lot of people who are going to say, Hey, I don't like this. Um, I don't think like most that. people are not going to care. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's actually true. <laughs> yeah. This is this podcast. I could just as easily say at the start of every episode and this podcast is for almost no one because you know, it's a very, you have to really like geospatial. You have to resonate with my voice, my way of doing things. Mm. And you have to be into podcasting and you have to find it. You know what I mean? Like all you, yeah. If you draw the, the Venn diagram, it's not very much space left there in the middle. But I'm not trying to reach everyone. I'm trying to reach a very, very specific someone. And I think that's so important. I think if you aim for the middle of the bell curve, you end up making average stuff for average people. Yeah. And you, you're forgettable. You know, no one, it's unremarkable, that kind of that's, thing. That's that's maybe one of the things that I'm I'm slowly discovering with podcast i think because the the um, barrier to entry is is relatively low like you can make something for relatively low means it it, it makes it easier for people to take risks because they don't have like huge amounts of costs that are are going to that they need to to refund the behind because the production is so expensive and that means that a lot of freedom comes from that as well. And so you can try to explore whatever you want. And I think that that medium is also really good for that about if, if someone wants to, to tackle something specific that, you know, nobody really thinks there's going to be something for, or like a, a really, you know, complicated topics people don't really want to talk about. Like you can become that person that, that has that, well, your name is on the line, but financially, I think there's also a lot of freedom that comes from, from podcasting because of, of how low the barrier to, to entry is that, that makes yeah. it very easy. Like I'm, I'm very happy to be able to do this and kind of do whatever the heck I want because all I need is a computer, a microphone and, and the internet and people who agree to waste time with me. But, but this is, um, but this is the internet in general, Like right? You could, you can make the same arguments about every social media platform. That's true. I, I think the, the true barrier to entry is that it takes so long to build an audience. Yeah, it's, yeah that, that's, that's the And to feel like you get, you're you getting that momentum. Because if someone said to you, hey, you're going to have to pump two years into this before anyone actually starts to listen. So it, it, um, here's some interesting statistics for you. So they say that there's something over, well over 2 million podcasts now registered in all these different directories. Um, there's something like, I think I said 800,000 that have, produced an, an episode in the last three months. And then of those 800,000 or of all of the podcasts. So uh, if you're getting over a hundred, these numbers change, fluctuate a little bit, but if you're getting over 150 downloads per episode, then, then you're at the, the average, like the average podcast wow. gets that. And, it, and then it goes up. So if, if you're getting over a thousand downloads per episode, I think you're in the, the top 20%. Yeah. Can you see where I'm going with this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, so, it's so, absolutely This not. is actually the barrier to entry because we all live in internet land where if you don't have a, a billion followers on some social platform, then you're almost not relevant. Yeah. Uh, and so people approach it like that. But it, it's different. It's long form content. And it's and the true barrier to entry is the true price you pay is that all the hard work it takes to get there. To, to build up yeah, that's, if that's if that's your thing right that's a really good point yeah i i i can't resonate with that enough i i, I no but specifically because i feel like i haven't heard that enough like i i think like we hear like oh it's so easy these days to to have a a, a medium but no actually you're right it, it is complicated to not to put something out there but to have people listen to it and there's so much choice. There's so it's, it's yeah. not like we're, we're we're missing content. The world is not. We don't have a content problem. What everyone has is the the reach problem. Where we have an obscurity problem because back in the good old days when we had mainstream media, we were guaranteed 15 minutes of fame, and now we're famous to 15 people. But those 15 people don't care because they are flooded with content all the time, all day. So the challenge is to to really lean into whatever you're doing, make something for somebody very specific mm -hmm. and uh, do it again and again and again and again and again. That's the, that's the, this is the barrier to entry now. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, I can't relate to that enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I want to go on a, 
tiny little side tangent. I've been curious, where does the name Mapscaping come from? It, does it come from somewhere actually, or did you just <laughs> pop in your mind like that? Um, I think at the start, like getting back to the, the website where we we're going to sell maps, we were going to make mapscapes, landscapes, mapscapes. Ah, interesting. That's the way it was going to go. It's probably a poor name uh, because I, like people often say, oh, it looks like manscaping. And they're right. I mean, there's only one. Oh. Yeah. And so, so my, my standard joke is like, if you were uh, looking for tips on male grooming, you're going to be sorely disappointed. This is not where <laughs> this is happening. So it was probably a poor choice of name, but it's, it is what it is, right? Yeah. But it's, it's like, it, I don't know. It's, it's also, you know, like it's, it's the, the stuff that it's, I don't know that like it's, it's also this very um, like talk about personal brand. Like I think, that talks to a lot of people now because it's been coming over and over and over again. Like, I, I, I don't think it's necessarily about the, the name itself. Like if you read like 10 blog posts, they're going to tell you about how you need to optimize for this and that and, and, and make sure, but no, it's, it's seeing that, you know, thing pop up on, on your phone every week. Hey, there's a new mapscaping episode. Um, oh, Hey, it's uh, next week. There's another one now. And Hey, Hey, there's another one again. And this, it's just that it, the the, the, the magic of consistency, I think, in yeah. making something. And again, you know, I've said this a million times for someone, for people that care. And I think, I think like right at the start, when people are trying to build something, uh, if you're trying to make a business, if you're trying to build your personal brand, there's a temptation to get lost in the details. Is this the right microphone? Do what, what does my logo mean? You know, do what, what should my tagline be my colors and, and all that kind of stuff. If you're building a website, what you actually need to do and all of that stuff is just to remind you of the promise that your company or your brand is making. Like the Nike swish thing means nothing. It just reminds yeah. you of the promise that Nike makes. And Nike, if you think about Nike as a brand, like they've made that promise and kept it for so long now. If they went out tomorrow and built a hotel, you have a good idea of what a Nike hotel would look like right? Because they've made a promise and you can't put words on it exactly the things, but you'd have expectations of that hotel, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I, it's just that, that consistency and yeah, people making the mistake that all these little things uh, are a brand are, uh, you know, the logo, the colors, the, the tagline, it's not the brand, the brand is the, is the promise. I, I think anyway. I, I, I agree. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not any measure of success by any means, but when I started this, I very specifically had those things as well about like, I was like, Hey, I could, I could, I, I was listening to yours. I was listening to, to the scene from above. And I was like, Hey, there's no like longer form. I also listen a lot to, to like Joe Rogan, to Lex Friedman stuff where they're like three, four hours. And I was like, I love those. I love those when you go for like a really long bike trip or a really long hike or whatever. And, and like, those are awesome. And I was like, there's, there's not something like that. And I was like, okay, what does it take? What would it take to do that? And, and I kind of made a, like a little list and like the number one was like, it's about the conversation. Like that's the thing that comes. Number two is also the conversation. Like that's so important. It's, it's the second item on the list. And then it's like, yeah, maybe the, the, the quality needs to be not too crap so that you don't zoom out after 10 minutes because it's like super choppy but it's not as important as the conversation and then the logo and then the name and like, they're really important, but it's like, honestly, it, if, if you have someone super interesting and they're recording something on a phone, you're probably still going to be listening. Um, it, like the, the, the thing you're saying, the stuff that you're putting out there, I think is, is really important. And I know when I was starting, that's what I specifically wanted to focus on about it's packaging. Everything else is, is packaging and packaging is important, especially for, for podcasting where you were saying it yourself, there's not really any recommendation system. So you have to make people kind of come over, but it's, it's super important that people come back because that's, that's basically how you build it. And that means that if people are going to listen to you for an hour and a half, they need to enjoy, they need to, to take something out of it. And as, as long as the sound is good enough, then you're basically good to go. That's, that's how I was trying to approach it at least. Yeah. And, and I reckon you're doing an amazing job. I, I really do. And I like the way that you just, I'm going to shop and I'm going to do this. 
and well, it was, there's, it, and, and making that you, you made that choice. I'm not going to be like that guy or this person or this woman. I'm going to be like me. That, yeah, great. I think I think uh, that's 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 why it's so interesting to have more people put, come in because like having this conversation is is really insightful for me because I'm realizing, wow, we're we're seemingly doing the same thing, but we're actually not going in the same direction at all, even though you know, looking from afar, you could just say, oh, there's, they're basically the same thing. There's just one that's like 20 times more popular than the other, <laughs> but they're the same thing basically. But no, it's, it's really interesting to, this is exactly why I wanted to have that podcast to, to make this is to be able to understand your process, what you're trying to do. And this is very meta because we're talking about what we're doing right now. Uh, <laughs> but it's, 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 it's really interesting to hear that as well. Like the the amount of thought. I, I really think podcasts is is like an art form in a way. You were talking about editorial decisions, um, how how you prepare something. Um, there's all the editing that comes out. You have a little bit of music. You have your um, your logo. Like it, it, I think it's it's an art form to to a, to a certain degree. It's not just talking to a microphone. It's like taking in two people talking and then making something out of it that is very unique to to you if if we ever have that conversation for example on on your podcast the end result would be completely different it's the same two people talking um and and that's what i think is so interesting is is to have those different points of view um especially in in, in today's world uh, i i think that's that's the the richness that comes from it Totally. And again, it's, it's not a zero sum game. And yeah. I've heard lots of people, if we stay with the medium of podcasting for a second, say like everyone's starting a podcast, there's so many podcasts, like, great, good. It's, it's not like no one complains when somebody starts a Twitter channel and, and or they're just going to show up with some sort of, you know, snacky tweets from time to time and no one complains. Yeah. I, and no one complains when someone starts a YouTube channel or points out that, hey, we've already got enough blogs right? We've already got enough articles, please, everyone stop writing books, no more music, thanks. And for some reason, with podcasting, exactly. people are like, whoa, we've reached peak podcast. <laughs> no, we haven't. We, we yeah. need more voices, yeah. more people doing their own thing, because there's more choice, right? You're more likely to be heard or find somebody else that that, that resonates with you. And that's great. It's, it's really nice to hear that, especially coming from from you. Like, I know, you've been an inspiration when I was starting. I was like, wow, this is really cool. Some guy's actually making it. And I remember listening to those and being like, wow, this is really cool. Like there is some stuff in, in geospatial and, and like that it just kept coming. I was like, wow, this is, this is really cool. Like there is some, some, some people doing that. So I, I, I mean, I, I've started now, but I, I find it very, um, I don't even know what <laughs> I'm looking for. Inspiring. I think that, that you also have that, that, um, uh, I'm losing my words. <laughs> that that yeah, you're you're really open to that and really encouraging people to 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 come up um, with that as well. Uh, so, someone inspired me too, right? Like I talked about those podcasts that I was listening to. It was someone's voice, someone's consistency, someone's message that inspired me. If I had something to do with you starting, awesome, you know. And the, the magical thing here is that you're doing it now. Someone yeah. is going to be listening to you and they're going to find this on the internet and go, huh, right. There's room for me too. This guy's doing it. This person's doing it. And yeah, it, it'll just sort of carry on. And it's, it, it's, it's great, right? Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, they might never reach out to you. Like how many times, how many letters have you written to Joe Rogan? Yeah. No? <laughs> I mean, I don't but think he needs more. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but my, I guess my point is that yeah. you don't get to decide what resonates with other people. You just get to That's do true. your work, show up in a way, put it out in the world. You have no idea who it's going to touch. You're, you're really lucky and privileged if someone reaches out to you and tells you because that that is fuel for the next week. It's really meaningful when people do that. But Joe Rogan means a lot to a lot of people, right? He has no clue how many lives he's touched and changed, how many um opinions he, he's changed along the way right he's just moving through the world and there's this whole turmoil behind him and you can just hope that a lot of it's good right and some people will be inspired and every podcaster points to joe rogan and say well he did it 
maybe I can do it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's pretty crazy. <laughs> and it's what, amazing. What came out of that, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's uh, for for podcasting is pretty impressive. I, I think it's one of the mediums where compared to maybe blogs, where you can directly write a comment or YouTube like um, video where where there's a lot of activity on it. It's it's really this. Here I'm going to shout to the world about how much I love maps, and then you just come back and you see a little curve that says this is how many people listened um and like it's very you're doing yourself a, a bit of a disservice there by <laughs> shouting at the world how much you love maps i think you're doing a lot more than that no but you know what i mean I, like I the the, the, yeah. the feedback you get is is yeah he, crickets like you you, you yeah. don't until until you meet someone in like at an event or something and they're like hey i love what you're doing and you're like wow <laughs> and um yeah, I, and I like I can just relate to the the people that I follow, the podcasts that I listen to. It's mm-hmm. like these people are, are completely shaping my life, and they're doing it at scale, yeah. right? So I believe in this idea of we have mentors, people that are in our personal network that we can go to and you know sit, a, you know we can both sit down at table, but then having superheroes as well. And some of the people that I listen to, they're, they're like my superheroes. They're changing the world at scale, and it's it's just amazing. We'll, we'll never interact with them but i spend hours with them like in some cases anyway yeah. hours with them each week and it's yeah. incredible it's Absolutely. a real privilege but i think also this is like one of the reasons why i wanted to, to start this this is turning into me talking about me <laughs> but it, it, it's like to have those conversations like this like i just was able now to to get a couple hours with you and talking about this like all that stuff like it's it's becoming a uh an excuse to have those conversations with the people that i look up to it's like all right what's the best way i could do i probably can't just go out there and grab a drink with this person and talk two hours with them but if i turn it upside down and i'm like hey we're gonna i have a podcast and do you want to come talk about two hours and i'm gonna ask the same questions and it's just gonna be packaged a little differently but end of the story you pretty much get there as well so I really think that's a, maybe a bit unfortunate that that's how it happens, but it's definitely something that um, makes it easier for yourself. If, if that's what you want to be doing, that's, that's a great way to be able to, to get in touch with people. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Especially in that, in our field that it's still relatively small. Like if you want to do that in, I don't know, big tech stuff, um, good luck because there's people who've been doing that on YouTube for like 10 years. Um, but I feel like we're still something that's very early in geospatial. I think we might have, have, have talked about it in a, in a previous conversation where it's like there's no big YouTuber about um, anything geospatial. And, and there's like huge YouTubers that have these niches about stuff, but there's not in, in the one that we have. If you go to like more AI or ML or programming stuff, there are like really big names there. And you could argue that's like really niche. Like if you go on web development, there's like a massive amount of, of stuff. And then you go to like maps and there's not really that stuff. So I, I think it's also like up for grabs in, in, the, in the field that we're in. It's so wide open. When you think about that, if you look at this from a marketing perspective, if you want to build mm. a business around this, like it, it's wide open in my opinion. No, it's a total land grab. Like you, you still, like the, the, you know, you still got to show up and do something good. Yeah, something it's that's a worth lot of listening work. to, worth, worth reading, uh, worth watching on YouTube or whatever. You got to show up with something new, and you've got to be consistent about it. And th- there will need to be a certain element of professionalism about it. Um, but it, it's it's wide open. No, no one's got this covered. You know what I mean? There's plenty of podcast. Sure. We go back to podcasting again. There's a ton of podcasts out there about. Uh, famous people talking to other famous people about how they're famous. <laughs> it, it, it's done. That would be a difficult market to get into. But here in geospatial, the, the difficult thing is it's definitely not the content side. It's the reach side. And, and that'll be no matter what you do on YouTube or whatever else or, you know, blogs, social media, um, email newsletters, email newsletters, man, please, someone out there, start more email newsletters. Like, and filter out some of the crap that's coming through. It, it would be amazing. There, I, there's uh, a couple that I follow, uh, Joe Morrison, definitely. He doesn't write very often, unfortunately. But um, I, I think that I think it's wide open, I guess is what I'm saying, just like you. 
for sure. And and I that's I feel extremely lucky that in this field, like you, Joe Morrison, like some of those people are are the are the people that I feel like are the the Joe Rogans and, and the Lex Friedmans of of our field. And I feel super lucky that it's just so approachable as well. Like it's still really early and it feels like it's maybe not gonna gonna last uh, forever if, if it really starts picking up. But I feel like it's such a great time where it's it's super easy to, to go to people, to approach people, to ask them, hey, do you wanna even have like a 30 minute call? Um, I've done that to people. People have done that with me and it's always really interesting. You can't do that in every field. And I think it's such an exciting time to be in this field where a lot of people are really available because there's not that much people talking about it. And so whenever someone is like, hey, do you want to talk about maps with me? And it's like, yes, heck yeah. <laughs> yeah, but what is it that you're doing? How are you doing it? Where are you going? And also that um, what I'm trying to do now more and more is trying to introduce people to other people. Mm -hmm. If I can see a connection, try and help people make that connection. You know, like because we're all so scattered working yeah. in our own silos, especially since being working at home and that no conferences to go to, maybe that'll come back someday soon. But I guess my point is that we're missing that connectivity and that one-on-one -on -one connectivity, I think as well. Um, so I, I don't know, I've tried to go to a few online events. Mm. But I, I really struggle with it to be perfectly honest. Because if, if it feels too much like watching TV, I don't get yeah. to interact with people, ask questions. I don't get to have any sort of meaningful conversations. Not that it needs to take an hour, but just uh, figure out like that, that kind of conversation where you walk away and you feel like, yeah, I could reach out to that person again if I wanted to. I, I think that would remember me. Absolutely. So talking about that, one, one of the first times we, we interacted, we, we talked about communities and, and building communities. And um, you were mentioning how that's something that you were thinking about. And, and we've, we've had a few chats together where, where we talked about that. I kind of wanted to, to bring this up a little bit again about like where you are kind of right now at, at trying to do that, trying to, to bring people like that. What, what does it look like to build a, a community? Um, and, and what are your thoughts? Are you playing around with some ideas? these days um yeah just just wanting to to have your thoughts on that and um, well just like when i was talking about starting a podcast i wanted to make sure that i could you know make a promise and keep it and i've been involved in a few communities before where <clears throat> the promise was that you know we're going to be in there maintaining this com community looking after it doing things and then it's just that there's been no management it's been spammy it's been uh you know just a post from time to time, no interaction. And, and that kind of stuff really needs to be nurtured. So at the moment, I'm still really, really, even after two and a half years, I'm really trying to make the podcast as sustainable as possible. Right. And I'm only just now sort of getting some traction where people are, are starting to reach out to me, where I can start to uh, build up a back, not a back catalog, but you know, have a bunch of episodes on my Google Drive that, that are ready to go. Um, yeah, and and then that gives me time to start thinking about other things. I'm okay. changing the website over at the moment, so I don't really want to build a community or even think about that until I'm sure that I can make something that's worthwhile for people. Right. Uh, but I think now, if you ask me where I would like to participate in a community or perhaps even try and uh, be the founder of one, I think it would be on um, Discord. I think that would be okay. where I where I would be looking. Yeah, I think it's very popular for 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 podcasts. It's like you you interact a lot with voice through people as well on on that platform. Um, and there's no at least as far as I know, there's no algorithm getting in the way of the people that you try and talk to. Mm -hmm. Again, like this is the magic of podcasting, right? So, I create some content, put it in my RSS feed, put in you know schedule it for sometime on Wednesday, Thursday, and there's no algorithm getting in the way. It just, if you have subscribed to the podcast, it just shows up. Yeah. But that's not the same with email. That's not the same with uh, a video on YouTube. Just because you're subscribed to something, you won't necessarily see it. It's the same with all the people that you follow on different social media. You don't see everything. It's an algorithm getting in the way. And, and that's not the case with podcasting at the moment. Mm. And I, I love that about it. And if you go to Facebook and start building something there, you're, you're basically a, a digital sharecropper. 
yeah. you know, you don't own the land that you're working. And I, if I'm going to invest so much time and energy into it, I don't want someone showing up and say and having an algorithm decide who gets the message and, and who doesn't. Yeah, so yeah, I, I really I, like I totally get behind that. that. Yeah, I really like that side of of Discord. And so let's let's dig a little bit. What does the future of of mapscaping look like in in the next? Uh, maybe few few years like it seems like you're in the in the long term for this right now what what is what does it look like um if we're looking ahead a little bit well i would really like to build a well i'm starting to i'm building a business around the the podcast i mm -hmm. want to be my own boss i i really enjoy that this work i don't always find it easy by you know it's not yeah I definitely don't always find it easy, but I find it incredibly challenging and incredibly fulfilling work. I, I can't remember the last time in my day job where someone showed up and said, hey, that was awesome. That that really resonated with me, that uh, that thing that you did with the with the server there in the background. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm doing something that, that's more, more sort of meaningful. So I'm busy trying to build a, a business around it, make it sustainable. So that's what the future looks like. Um, I'm, I'm really looking for something that I can do no matter where I am, have meaningful work that I can take with me. I'm from New Zealand, living in Denmark. My, yeah, my, my father's dying in New Zealand at the moment of some awful disease. And at some stage, I'd like to get back to there. And yeah. I'd like to be able to take my work with me. And this is where I see that podcasting could give me the opportunity. I, mm -hmm. I imagine it would be a combination of uh, podcasting and something help, happening, um, happening on the website maybe some kind of affiliate relationships with people, with things that I believe in, something like that. Um, but that's, that's where I'm going at the moment. And so, yeah, I, I think that that portability is something that a lot of people are, are really enjoying with this and with their lives in general. Um, I want to touch a little bit about that, making, turning that, into a business because it feels like you started with that with with the like selling maps trying to have the podcast um point to that um one of the things i found really interesting um i first of all discovered your website way longer after i discovered the podcast um and i was like wow you you don't talk about it like for for something that was trying to bring traction i was actually expecting to be like at the end hey by the way um i have like for you know the people who might have come to until the end or, or something and 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 i find that very intriguing um and, and i kind of wanted to ask um why why was that um because that i i, I um f seem like the website is still up and, and you're still um they they're still ability to to get those maps to you have some socks as well and so it, it feels like something where where when you see other people they're like they they start making something and then they have like merch or something and like that's the next step but for you that was the first step but you but you don't seem to be leaning on it that much and and i'm quite curious as to as to why oh i'm i did so many made so many mistakes at the start <clears throat> And, and one of the biggest mistakes I made was um, making something and then going looking for people for the stuff that I made as opposed to mm. finding some people and then looking for stuff for my people, if that makes sense. Yep. So I, I built it and expected them to come. And I found that the audience that I was good at building and the thing that I was actually really interested in and had a unfair advantage, it didn't really resonate with, with that, with, with the maps and with the socks. Uh, and I'm really careful about what I say on the podcast. Like I'm not not like overly pedantic about it. I want to, you know, I'm a human, <laughs> I, I guess is what I'm saying, but I, I don't want to waste your time. If I feel like it's not resonating with you, like the the things that we have on our website, I'm, I'm not going to tell you about it. I've got, I only give myself a very short amount of time at the start and the end of each podcast where I I usually have a very specific message that I want you to hear. I want to say thanks for something. Thanks for listening. I want to introduce the guest. I want to say that you're more than welcome to reach out to me on social media. And the, those are those are precious moments that I have with the audience. And I, I don't want to push stuff that I don't think right. is going to resonate with them. When I have something that re, that I think is going to resonate with them, I, I will I will tell you. <laughs> and, and because you know it's important to build sustainability around these things. But at the yeah. moment, I don't feel like those are the things that really resonate with people. And I'm still 
looking for that actually. Okay. What, what is going to resonate with these people? How, because I, I do want to build a business around, I want to make sure this is sustainable. But I think that's what maybe a lot of people are also looking for is, is respect from the people that are creating things. I think there's been a lot of mm, tiredness through things like clickbait and, and um, like constant uh, optimization for ads and, and things like that. And, and I think there definitely is a, a desire to feel more respected to, in, in your time. Like we're asking people a lot of time um, and, and a lot of their focus and concentration, even though, you know, people listen to these while they're doing the dishes or going for a run that's still a lot of mental space that you're asking people and i i mean again this is quite inspiring to hear you being like no no no, this is all about like having this relationship and, and this respect towards the the people in in that um how you you've started i think quite recently doing doing some sponsor spots on on the on the podcast how has that been, uh, how has the process been for that? Because that's basically you saying, hey, look, I, I'm going to take a little bit of that attention that you're giving me and I, I'm going to try to, to sell something because that, 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 that's what it is. That's also how basically you're able to provide all those episodes. So like that's asking back to, to the community, but I'm guessing that's not an easy task. And so I, I, I kind of wanted to, to ask you a little bit about the, the process, how you went through thinking about that because it, it, it seems like you've put a lot of thought into it yeah yeah i have and um so i first of all i, I charge a lot of money you know much, much more than the industry standard and anyone listening to this if they're curious go go and um you know do a google search for the industry standard and podcast episodes per download and you'll see it's pretty low something like fifty dollars for a uh, thousand um, downloads or something, you know, and that's, that's at the high end. Um, so yeah. I charge significantly more than that. And I do it because I only want to work with some people. I'm not, my, my goal right. is not to overwhelm people with ads. Right. So, uh, yeah. So, so that that's first, first things first is that if I'm going to interrupt somebody with a message they weren't expecting, then it has to be worth my time. It has to make sure that I can do other things with that. Uh, give value in other ways. Maybe I can produce more episodes, put other people on a stage whose voices aren't normally heard, that kind of thing. But I'd rather have, you know, less people. I, I'm not, I guess what I'm saying is I'm not racing yeah. to the bottom yeah. with that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Um, so that, that's really important to me. Uh, I only work with people that I know, like, and trust. So I think everyone that's, the, every ad that you've ever heard on the podcast has been from a company that's been on the podcast. Mm-hmm or a company that I've sat down and talked with, because, you know, again, you, you've got a relationship with people. You can't just be selling one thing one day and then, oh, it turns out that was a pyramid scheme. <laughs> you, know, you know, like that, that, that's on you then if you did that. So at the very least, you can have a conversation with these people. It's not like a self-serve ad platform. Yeah. So have a conversation with these people. Make sure they understand who they're reaching. Make sure they understand that, that it's unlikely that they're going to make direct sales both based on this, that, it, that it's a marketing, you know, it's a long-term brand marketing effort that they're going in to be open, honest around the numbers. So, and it's, it's, it's difficult. Selling is, is really, I, I find it really difficult, but yeah. I'm, I'm getting better at it because I'm believing more and more in, in what I'm selling. And I'm right. also approaching it. Like I've also started reframing this <clears throat> I talk about, I use the word generosity a lot because it's a generous thing in my mind to build sustainability around something that you think is meaningful. If you think that you're making, you know, making something better, then, and it's easy to give things away for free. When you're being generous, you're, it, it requires something of you. It requires an effort. It requires a conscious effort and to show up and say, I am going to build sustainability around this thing because I believe in it, because I believe it, it's making things better. And if you start framing it like that, I'm selfish if I don't kind of thing. And maybe that's just the way I have of talking myself into it, you know, doing the hard thing, mm -hmm. but, but, it, but it's working, you know, it, it, it really makes a difference for me. Have you, had any response from people like understanding like they they're like or wanting to support that as well i think the there's 
you know, what we're calling the, the creator economy is starting where people like ourselves, um, people who are, you know, doing in a, socks on Instagram stuff, which probably takes a lot more work than you could imagine uh, to, sure. to do that. Sure. Um, people who are, are blogging, people who are like this whole thing where, you know, usually is di distributed for free, but turns out there's like an insane amount of work behind, which is, you know, things like Patreon have, have really helped artists um, and creators come up. Do you feel like people are more receptive to this or have you just not not heard anything from it? Like, um, or, or yeah, not not heard about it. I'm just curious as well on, on that other end, because I, I know a lot of people have a lot of thoughts when their favorite creator does this or that. Um, and there's there's a lot of, of talk about that. And, and I'm curious to know if you've had any reaction from from the, the people that listen to you on that um no no i haven't no i have i've have, no one's reached out to me and said hey that really sucks maybe they might have thought it <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they, they haven't done it but I, on, on. I i think it's an it's an interesting balance because um I, I try and look at something and yeah, you're selling something, right? You're asking people to buy something. You're saying it's over here. So you can pack it in any way you want, but, but you're selling something, recommending something, standing behind something. So I'm trying to look for ways in that, like what would be useful for people? If you want to learn this, this, and this, this is what this, this is what they're going. I, sometimes I get a script from people, but I, I never read it. I always look at the mm, website myself. Right. What resonates with me? Is there a free trial? How many... What data types you get? Is there any use cases that I talk about? And I try <laughs> and, and make it, you know, interesting, I, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But it, it adds a certain, also adds like that, adds a certain uh, status because you're saying to people, hey, someone believes in me enough to back yeah, me, exactly. to give me money. You know what I mean? So it adds a certain amount of professionalism to it. And I think too, in some some ways, a lot of the episodes are ads and you know, bear with me here. Yeah, Some, I'm selling things like I'm selling an idea of, you know, show up and be proud of your work, be an advocate for it. Like this is GDAL, go, go and support it. It's an amazing piece of software or an idea or, you know, so I think of myself as constantly selling stuff or promoting mm. things. Hey, go and check out women in geospatial. They're doing something amazing. They've built a speaker's database. If you need a speaker, please go over there, look there. So I, I think of myself as, as selling or promoting all the time, of marketing, I guess, all the time. Right, but it is that's... something different when, when someone gives you yeah. a few dollars and says, please market this very specific idea. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I, I hope, like, if anything, these kinds of conversations a little bit more behind the scenes also kind of help people understand the amount of work that, that, that really comes to the the each episode that that they can hear and then and yeah i i hope we are at a point where it, it becomes um you know not even an issue and and also that people are willing to have to help I, I i think that that like probably would would feel great as well if 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 you had people like i don't know i don't know if you've you've had any that that also understand that um i think it's it's quite complicated especially because of of how much work goes behind the scene that, that people don't see. So it's maybe a little bit complicated to, to, to understand that. Um, it, I think it's really important for, for creators. Like, so again, I said, I charge more money than, than the standards significantly more. And, you know, I do that with intent. I, I'd rather have four ads than 28. Yeah. Right. Right. Like, uh, but, but that's, that's on us, you know, that's on us. That's on the cre creator of whatever medium it is that you're following or listening to, to do that, to do the really hard work. It's so easy to give stuff away for free. Yeah. It really is. But to mm -hmm. have that confidence, you know, if you're making something worthwhile and you can, you've got all those signs and signals around you that this is something worthwhile, this is something meaningful, then please charge money for it. Please. Like if you're going to um, interrupt people with that, like, don't, don't let anyone else set the rate. Yeah. I mean, use it as a guideline perhaps to start off with, but it, at the end of the day, it's up to that individual, I think anyway, to go and stand up for themselves, for their audience and be an advocate for those two things and for the work they're doing and say, look, my, my goal is not to race to the bottom. 
And instead of doing that, I'm just looking for better clients. I'm looking for better customers. And th this is easier said than done at the start. But as you build up confidence and uh, in terms of pricing, my pricing has gone, you know, up. Mm. <laughs> and, well, and, listenership probably as well. Yeah, but mostly it's not, um, there's not a direct correlationship between that. Mm. The thing that's actually gone up is I've become more confident in what I'm doing. That has been the big shift. And in terms of making money from, from sponsorships, the big right. shift has been that. I want to really uh, change change topics right now. I I, I want to come back a little bit to um, like from from your career point of view. It seems like and just life in general, like you've really taken a shift from from being more of of a, a developer or, or or working directly like on on building a, a project to now being more of a content creator to like talking to 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 people and, and creating this whole brand around it. Do you miss a little bit of the work that, that you were doing as well? And you, you're mentioning you weren't happy, but was that specifically because of, of the like maybe more technical work that you were doing? Was it or, or, or you know, the context, uh, if, if you have um, just an environment that doesn't work, do you do you miss a little bit of that um, uh, more maybe technical aspect that that's different from from the podcasting technical? Or is it something that, that you keep doing? Or um, I'm just really curious about because that's like quite a big shift to, to be like, you know, podcasting is, is going to be the, the, the thing that puts uh, food on the table. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a really good question. Yeah, yeah I, I do. I do miss the, the technical problem solving. I miss that, you know, when, when you write uh, a chunk of code and it just works, you know, and you see and you see the results of that and solving the problem and working through it. And it, like, and not that I was an ever, ever a great programmer by any stretch of the <laughs> imagination. I, I was always a hack, right? Always. Uh, but I love stringing together things, and making them work. I, I really enjoyed that. But I think I there was just, such a long period of time for me at work where it just wasn't an option where it was I was asked okay. just doing these repeatable things that I got out of the habit of doing that mm. so I don't miss it as much as I expected I would okay uh, that's for sure but um how old are you I'm 25 you're 25 I'm, I'm 44 I am um, when I was 18 from 27, all I wanted to do was travel and climb. That's it. And I spent, you know, I don't know how long I've spent in a tent, but months on end, like entire summer, six months in the Canadian summer, sleeping under rocks and just living the dream, climbing every day, six days a week, one rest day, climbing six days a week, hitchhiking to the next place, climbing six days. That's it. That's all I wanted to do in the winter time. Uh, I trained three days a week, you know, for two hours, just in a climbing gym. And my only goal was to stay on the wall for half an hour, three quarters of an hour at a time, and just to try and maintain that shape and just move around the wall. That was it. And when I moved uh, back to New Zealand when I was 27 and decided that I was going to go to university, so I started university much later, I, it was like a season changed and I went from my whole identity was climbing and traveling. That's all I'd ever done since I left high school. And I just moved into a new season and it was all university. I, I really struggled at university, but that's it. I, I just dropped climbing. And, and then I, there was a season of about 10 years where I was running. Like at one stage there, I was running, I don't know, two marathons a week and then having a break and running maybe an hour and a half somewhere in the middle of that. <laughs> Uh, and that, that's what I wanted to do. That was it. I had a, almost like a season of running, 10 years or something of, of running. And then I moved to Denmark and it changed again. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but yeah, like, exactly. sometimes I think we get trapped into these identities. You see kids at school and they get a nickname early on. And before they know it, they have to live up to this nickname, to, to something somebody else has given them and at start a lot of status comes with that you get known for that thing but you've got to let yourself develop and be open and honest say well okay i'm done climbing i, I miss it sometimes i miss coding sometimes i miss uh being able to run for like four or five hours you know i can remember what it was like 
I, I miss that. But now I, I'm really enjoying podcasting. I'm really enjoying jujitsu, you know, and you've just got to be open to these, these seasons and say, well, you know, I'm here now. I, I love New Zealand. I'm, I'm New Zealand all the way through. My father is a sheep shearer. You know, I grew up on a farm in the middle of nowhere and it would be difficult to find a more Kiwi person than me. But now I'm here in Denmark. Do I miss New Zealand? Yeah, you're damn right I do. Do I love living in Denmark? Absolutely. I hope you can see what I'm saying there. Absolutely. It just got to give yourself, allow yourself to change and develop and sort of try not to be too tied into those things. I think that's where I got trapped at work, actually, by mm -hmm. being too tied into that, tied up to that identity. Yeah, that's, that's uh, like, I, I can't agree more with, with, with trying to do that. I mean, what am I like this young guy saying that, but that like it, that's why I love these conversations is, is to discover that, especially when, when people are, are um, have a, a public kind of face, there's, there's a lot more that, that goes behind that. And I'm very grateful for you to, to open up by the way, and, and, and to tell those, those different Daniels that have been um, because I, I think those are nearly different people Um that that have walked this earth and and yeah very very grateful to to hear those stories and i think um it's it's great to be able to hear those stories and i i think for me it's been very helpful in moments where i felt stuck to, to be like oh um you know this too shall pass um that that yeah right now you, you you might not be great but but you might be something completely different i mean if you ask the you know 25 year old you when when you were climbing six days uh um a week you know what would happen in in, in 10 years you'd probably be like i'll be climbing maybe still <laughs> um yeah, and, and yeah. then going through university like those are, are really big changes and you probably frightened when when those happened um, and I'm guessing, you know, right now doing that process of, of switching to becoming this professional podcaster probably is, is, is scary um, in, in some moments as well. Um, I, I'm, I bet that doesn't really go away, um, but it's, it's great to, to hear those, those stories. I think those are invaluable stories to hear that, that people have gone through different things and then they have different selves that 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 have come um yeah yeah I, I think we're all looking for a recipe right so and if you think about your career the typical recipe people follow is go to high school you go to university and then, then you get a job and those are massive financial commitments so imagine what that means in the states going to university is yeah, it's it's a huge commitment on the promise that it's going to work you know, because you've seen it work for other people. So we're always looking for these patterns. But I think what we, because we're looking for patterns, we're not necessarily looking for the things people haven't done so much or the thing, the common path is you know, overshadows the other options out there, right? And it's really difficult to stand up and say, well, I'm going another way now. If you've built up a reputation as, as being a climber, I talk like a climber, I look like a climber, I was a total bum, do you know what I mean? All my friends were climbers. That that was it. My whole identity was climbing. And then to say, well, I'm done. I'm tired. Or I'm going to try something else now is really difficult. And people underestimate the rate of yeah. the amount of change. Like we think all our change happens in teenage years, but you nailed it when you said, like, if you had asked me when I was 25, 26, what I was going to be doing in 10 years, you know, I would have said more of this. Or, you know, what my favorite song was. I will always like that song. But that's not true. We continue to change, but for some reason, we think that all of the change happens between zero and 20, and then we're done changing. And we, we, I think we, yeah, we draw, we, yeah, we put ourselves in a very tight box, I think sometimes. But it, but it is terrifying. Change is really difficult, especially when you get older, you're, you're less flexible. You know, I have a family now, mm. and a, a part of my role as you know, one of the adults in the house is to help provide and it's terrifying. But when I think about university, so uh, in New Zealand, we pay money to go to university as well. It's three years. And that three years, I earned very little money. And I can, I, I see my, the, 
these three years I'm putting into podcasting now is my like apprenticeship. You know, I'm not expecting to earn a ton of money. I'm, I'm learning my craft. Can I do this? I'm looking for signs and signals that are going to show me that, that this is creating value, that people will pay money for this, that I can make a living doing this, that I enjoy doing it, that it's resonating with, with the people that are, I'm making it for and then making decisions based on that. Right. But I see the whole thing as an apprenticeship. That's a great lesson as well. I think in, in a world where we want things to move very fast, like you're saying, no, I'm, this is going to take three years um, to, to learn the craft. Um, that That's, I, I think, also something we we can learn a lot from where things like these, these things, like this is long term and it's going to take, um, it's not going to take all your time. It's going to take a little bit of time. That's going to be every week. And and that's like a, a lot harder to do than to be like, okay, this month I'm going to work like crazy and, and get it done and then move on and never have to do it again. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't consider myself a, a, an adult yet, <laughs> but I, I've, I've, I've been through a little bit of those phases where I, I've changed as well, uh, completely path. Um, I, I studied um, aerospace mechanical engineering, so, so how to build rockets, um, and, and completely switched into the, the, the remote sensing. I mean, it's, it's still a lot of space stuff, but, but I, remember when in university I had them asking like what do you want to do and I'm like as far away from software as I can and now I'm, I'm trying to get as much as I can right now and and I feel like having done it um like a, a couple times like moving countries as well this is also a muscle like to to reuse the terms that that you were using um in, in some of your um episode with with, with Joe Morris and like this is I, I feel like also like getting used to, to the change and like reinventing yourself, I think is something that you can also practice and, and get better at and trust yourself that, oh, there's this mountain that I'm going to have to, to, to learn. And, and you see those people who are mastering the, the, whatever they are doing and been doing it for a really long time. You're like, there's no way I can get there. And I think doing it a little bit, um, makes you like brings you that confidence that you you can do it it's going to take years um and 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 a massive amount of effort but it's it's doable and i think doing it a few times and and having completely changed who you are as a person um is is a, a great thing to go through it's it's terrifying it's scary and and you wake up some days and like what the heck am I doing? <laughs> but you look back and you're like, wow, the, the, I, I can't imagine what it must have been like to, to, to be climbing for what you said, nine, 10 years, I think. Um, and then to, to go back to university, I, I cannot imagine what that must have been like. Uh, that, and I, 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 that didn't happen in, in one day. I'm, I'm guessing like that must have been lots of, of conversations with, with people saying like, I want to, I want to get back into that. Um, same thing for the podcasting. I, I, I can imagine those are massive things that take up so much space in, in your head. Um, and, and I wish there was conversations around that, like going back to university. I wish I had, of, I wish I had someone to talk to about it, but I was living by myself in Germany at the time. So I've been traveling around for six years and I, I failed everything at high school. I have a certificate of attendance at high school past nothing. And in New Zealand, you can start university even though you've passed nothing in high school. So that was that was my way into university. And uh, and I spent the last, you know, ever since I was 18, telling myself I was too dumb to go to university. In New Zealand, we, we would say things to um, kids like me, <clears throat> oh, they're, they're not university material was the was the term mm. that we would use. And that, that was most definitely me. Uh, I have still have a lot of problems with with reading and writing I'm incredibly slow at both of them um, but the reason I thought that I could go to university was I'd be living in Germany for two years and I taught myself German and so in my tiny little brain I thought to myself well only smart people know two languages I know two languages I taught myself two languages maybe I'm a smart person perhaps I should go to university and that was the entire thought process and then I found out that, yeah, I can go to university without having to redo, redo high school and started off there. And that's how I ended up at university. Wow. I, 
want to kind of actually end it on that. Just before that, I, I really want to ask that question. If I, because I, I, I like that. Um, did you have any book recommendations, like things that you've read or, or listened to that you think are, have been influential as well? Um, not, nothing necessarily to do with, with geospatial, but is there something that really pops to your mind that, that has been um, influential in your life? Um, talking to people, uh, listening to people has been incredibly important for me. And asking questions, being curious, and if I made sort of a media recommendation, I would recommend anything by a guy called Seth Godin. He has a podcast called Akimbo, and it's all about marketing, and everyone should listen to it. All right. I think we can uh, end it there then. Daniel, I, I really want to thank you um, for, on especially quite short notice, um, coming up um, and, and being on the podcast and for, for being so open about it, for, for spending a lot of your precious time with me and, and having that conversation um, about, about your work and, and about your life in the end there. I'm very grateful uh, for this conversation. It was uh, great. I've, I've learned a lot. I'm uh, inspired for quite a while. Um, so I, I really want to say thanks. You've been quite a, an inspiration as well. Um, you definitely have your name up there for the people that um, have led to this podcast being a thing. Um, so yeah, th thank you very much. And, uh, I'll, I'll be, um, waiting for the next episodes to come out on your side. I just want to say, I, I really appreciate that. And thanks very much for inviting me on the podcast. I think when I look at a young person like yourself, I think, wow, you are so much further ahead that, than I was perhaps than I will ever be. And it's, it's inspirational. It's uh, impressive. And, I will do whatever I can to, to help you on your journey. So if there's ever anything I can help you with, please let me know. I'll help where I can. Thank you very much for, for those kind words.